Hello everyone, back tuning in to today's first video. It's JMA Friday, so as usual on Friday, we're going to have your month head look up with Japanese CFSV2 models. We're going to take us into the first half of April, so uh, we cover the rest of Ma uh, March and into the first half of April with this update. Later on this afternoon, we'll have your week to 10 day video updates that have all the regular uh, updates and uh, things that you expect with week to 10 day uh, video updates. So we're going to get on with um, JMA Friday uh, right now. We're going to start off having a look at the 500 millibar height anomaly flow charts from the Japanese uh, meteorological agency uh, month head model. Uh, we're looking at the North Pole view down uh, first of all. So this is the North Pole of the uh, Northern Hemisphere just here and mid latitudes of the Northern Hemisphere are, are around there. Blue is extrapolating to below average heights, which is low pressure. Yellow, orange and red to above average heights, which is high pressure. So in the weekend, these are breaking down into week periods. The first week period will take us from the 15th through to the 22nd of uh, March. In the week ahead, we've got below average heights to the north and to the west of the British Isles. And we've got above average heights down to our south and southwest so it brings quite a strong jet stream across the atlantic uh, rather like that uh with the most of the conditions in the north and west close to that area of below average heights next to below pressure so that's where the wettest windiest of the conditions will be in week ahead high pressure is building to our south and southwest so that's where the driest conditions are likely to be temperatures should be pretty mild overall then we go through to uh, week two. This one takes us from the 22nd through to the 29th of March with below average heights out to the northwest of the country, above average heights building to our south and southeast. The flow and the jet going something rather like that. So the high pressure is taking control. We're pushing the jet stream north and uh, we still have low pressure in the Atlantic. So it's probably still a bit unsettled for the north and west. But for many of us, we're going... Uh, towards higher pressure, which means it should be turning drier and warmer, milder, warmer, uh, as we go through to the final stages of uh, the month. Then we go through to week three and four. This takes us from the 29th of March through to the 12th of April. High pressure is dominant, so we've got a ridge of high pressure stretching from the Atlantic into the UK and covering many northern and uh, central parts of Europe as well. Below average heights, low pressure out towards Greenland and Iceland. Jet streams being pushed northwards, so essentially it looks like the first half of April should have a lot of dry and pretty warm weather on off. Now obviously, obviously these are anomaly charts over a two-week period, so it could be that you get a bit of a transition at some point through this two-week period to more unsettled conditions. But to be honest, that does look like a, a mainly dry and a fairly mild, if not quite warm, first half to April showing up there uh, with the JMA today. Let's confirm that with a tropical and mid-latitude view. So on this view, the British Isles is just here in the top right-hand corner of the chart as you're looking at it. We can't see the pole, the North Pole, but of course we know uh, what's going on there because just seen that view down. The North Pole is off the chart up here. So in week one, we've got above average heights to our south and southwest. We've got below average heights up to our north and northwest. The Flurma Jet is pushing through rather like that. <coughs> Excuse me. And so it's still quite unsettled up in the north. There would still be some influence from the jet stream and from the Atlantic. So the most unsettled conditions would be in the northwest. The driest and mildest conditions would be down in the south. Temperature anomalies in the week ahead. Uh, the uh, 15th to the 22nd of March. Above average, mild and average temperatures coming up in week ahead. Precipitation anomalies. So still a little bit more uns on the unsettled side, actually. Maybe more so than you expect from the anomaly chart, with most parts of the country turning out to be above average with precipitation. I think that will be more particularly for the northwest. I think that's a bit pessimistic for the south and southeast. I would suspect that the south and southeast actually gets quite a lot of dry weather there, but maybe quite unsettled up in the north and in the northwest. Then in week two, which is the 22nd to 29th of March, the above average heights are building closer to us. High pressure is taking over as a low pressure and the jet stream is being pushed out to, to the north and the west. So you'd expect this to still be quite warm, but possibly uh, drier temperature anomalies in this week, final week of March from the 22nd to 29th. Uh, above average temperatures coming up then. Precipitation anomalies. So England and Wales goes uh, drier than average. Scotland and Northern Ireland uh, remains a little bit wetter than average. Still a bit of the influence of the jet stream there. 
I would have thought most parts of the country by this point would like to be fairly dry. And then we go through to weeks three and four, takes us from the 29th of March to the 12th of April, with above average heights then centred over the country, but also back into the Atlantic as well, and covering much of Central and Northern Europe too. So high pressures weren't truly in control. Temperature anomalies over the two weeks are remaining above average, so continues to be a very mild scene. Precipitation anomalies overall on the drier than average size. Still a bit unsettled for Scotland, but overall quite dry. So the trend is clearly there towards higher pressure, high pressure through the final stages of March and lasting into the first half of April, bringing us a lot of dry and uh, pretty uh, mild, if not quite warm weather as well. So let's see how the CFSV2 is uh, looking in comparison. These again are 500 millibar heights. So break it down into weak periods. The first week period will take us from the 15th to the 21st of March. The coming week has below average heights up to the north. Quite a deep trough of low pressure uh, in the northern Atlantic. Above average heights in the middle of the Atlantic. Flurma jets come through like that. So perfect agreement between the JMA and the CFSV2 uh, for how we progress in the um, week ahead. Looks rather unsettled for the north, for the south, probably an increasingly uh, dry trend. Then we'll change into week two. This is the 22nd to 28th of March, and this one has above average heights building uh, to the south and east of the country, but below average heights are becoming centred out to the north and to the west. The flow of the jet is being pushed up there. The jet is being pushed up there. So we're going into high pressure conditions for the final stages of March. Lots of dry and you would have thought fairly warm uh, weather there to close out uh, the month. Uh, week three is looking like this. It's the 28th through of uh, March uh, through to the 29th March, I should say, through to the 4th of April, with above average heights to our south and also to our east. Below average heights are uh, penned in across Greenland and Iceland, the flow and the jet is going like that. So, again, that's going to be very dry and potentially quite warm, I would have thought, through the final days of March and into the opening days of April. Very anticyclonic signal. And then this goes on into week four. So, it looks like high pressure coming back big time out of this more unsettled interlude that we've been uh, having through the first half of um March. It looks like high pressure really is back big time. This is the um, anomaly chart for week four. It's the 5th through to the 11th of April. Just a very large ridge of high pressure centred over and to the north of the country. We may be pulling in some slightly cooler air from the east or the northeast. Difficult to say, uh, really, but I don't think it'll be overly cold. We're under that big ridge of high pressure. Maybe chilly nights beginning to come through, but relatively pleasant quite warm days, I would have thought. The main thing, though, is becoming very dry uh, once again. Week 1, temperature anomalies with CFS V2 from the 15th to the 21st of March. Close to average for the north of the country, above average down in the south. Then all parts of the country in week 2, going warmer than average, 22nd to 28th of March, significantly above average temperature anomalies coming back. That continues into uh, week three. This is 29th of March to the 4th of April. Again, significantly uh, milder, warmer than average in week three. And this goes on into week four as well. So we've got some really warm weather to come uh, for the time of year anyway in uh, the next four weeks with uh, generally above average temperature anomalies. That closes out uh, the period, the 5th to 11th of March, substantially above average. Precipitation anomalies finally, so the week ahead, agreement with both models actually, JMA and the CFSV2, want to have above average precipitation in the week ahead from the 15th to the 21st of March. Again, for England and Wales, I think that's a little bit pessimistic. I don't think it'll be anywhere near uh, that wet. For the northern part of the country, that may be okay. I suspect for the northwest, it will be quite unsettled uh, well into next week. But for the south and southeast, I think there will be a lot of dry weather on offer even in the week ahead. Uh, week two, which is the 22nd to 28th of March, takes the above average precipitation out to the north and west of the country. Southern areas are indicated to possibly be going onto the drive and average side. 
Week 3 is the 29th of March to the 4th of April. And it's coming out with average precipitation. But I would have thought that's likely to be a pretty dry week. And then this goes on into week 4 as well. It's the 15th of March. That one is also coming out drier uh, than average. So I think we've got a clear trend here amongst um, or between both of the models, really. They both want to bring back high pressure big time. So although we've had quite an unsettled first half to March, we have had some useful rainfall that will have helped won't have made up but will have helped the rainfall deficit uh, it looks like we're back in business with high pressure so high pressure back in business I think is the uh, message from JMA Friday today uh, we're going back towards much more anti-cyclonic conditions much drier conditions much warmer uh, milder or warmer conditions and uh, really it's just high pressure all the way once we get the next few days out of the way now do remember those are anomaly charts over weekly or two weekly periods so it almost certainly won't be totally dry for the full four weeks there will be some rainfall coming through but overall it does look like a very strong signal for high pressure to be back and increasingly warm and dry conditions as we go through to the final stage of march and into early april as ever, it could all look very different next week. These uh, long-range models are highly unreliable. They are prone to chopping and changing. So it's just a snapshot of what they're showing this week. Don't necessarily take it all that serious, although it is a pretty strong signal. Right, so we'll be back later on this afternoon with your week's 10-day video update. Come back for that then. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.